Hey guys, Kev here, and welcome to the What's Hot video for the Urban EDC drop on September 27th at 3 p.m. Eastern time, baby. I got my Peace Neighbor hat on as usual. I got my new one. It's right here. You guys want to check that one out? Digging this one as well. It's a little different, a little uh, lower style, I guess. I like this one, I think, a bit more just because it's got that kind of square look. And then, I don't know, just fits. I think it fits a little nicer for me. I'm a black and white and gray kind of guy. Got my new Sparrow Knife Co. shirt on. Check out Sparrow Knife Co. Greg's a great dude. Um, I got a couple things in from Urban EDC uh, last week. These are customs that were sent in to check out. I just asked if I could check them out. I didn't get any items in for the drop. I think it's a bit of a light week for them. So I still wanted to go over it though and show you guys if you're interested in any of these items, there is a link down below. It does help the channel if you guys use that link. So, you know, you can do that if you like. Uh, these items are all sort of one-offs. Uh, if you want any of them, you can just hit up Urban EDC let them know that it's one of the items that I have and we can work something out where I'll ship it to you or whatever. I'm trying to get them back to them as well. So uh, we'll see. But anyway, the first one is the Rexford rut. This is uh, a Todd Rexford, basically custom utility knife, which is really cool. In my opinion, you kind of push this button right here and then the blade will literally fly out. Um, that's what you got to be careful of. I forgot about that. You just push it back. It's real easy to operate and then it'll click into place. So you just kind of push it, pull, click it where you want it. And then you're good to go. And then when you're done, just push like that and it locks in back here. Now, if you do what I did, it'll uh, shoot out, but you can kind of like get it to, if you're careful, get it to like slowly slide out. Um, and click into place like that. But it is fairly comfortable for a utility knife. It's very comfortable. Also has sort of a pry slash flathead back here and a little spot to put bits, bottle opener. It's really the only uh, thing with a bottle opener that I've actually thought was designed really well. Um, now, downside on these is the price. They are like 250 bucks, very expensive, but you know, CNC custom made by a knife maker of his quality. That's just kind of the way it goes. I also have this really cool um, Brad Zinker custom in. This thing is absolutely bonkers. Um, I now understand why Zinker is regarded the way he is. Uh, unfortunately, he works a lot with Boker. So we don't get to see these amazing designs in sort of the quality and feel that we want. They have been doing some with Riot lately, but this is a full-on custom, and it's fantastic. I think these go for like $900, so he's not breaking the bank. It's, I believe, Ironwood. Shout out to the folks who uh, replied on my uh, – commented on my video. This thing is small but mighty. I'll compare it to our knife, the Devo Knives Nip. This is a two-and-a-quarter-inch blade, two-inch cutting edge. Okay, so you actually have identical blade lengths here, almost identical knives, a little bit longer in the handle here on the Devo. Um, with that choil, of course, you get a full four finger grip with a large glove size hand on this three fingers. Right. Um, but it is awesome. Action is amazing on bearings, must be on tiny little guys. And there is no play, no nothing. It is amazing. Flipper tab's really good. Front flipper is amazing. And then if you're left-handed, you even can reverse flick it. So this is actually a really good lefty knife. If I had just money laying around to pick up whatever I wanted, I would probably buy this knife. Um, I really like it. It works really well left-handed too. And then lastly, we have a Mag-10 custom slip joint. I've been told... Thanks again to the uh, to the comment section on my video. I've been told that he was trained to make slip joints under Chuck Gadritis. Gadritis, maybe I said that wrong. I'm sorry. 
somebody correct me in the comments again. But I mean, look, the walk and talk on here is absolute bonkers good. This is the kind of stuff that Jack Wolf Knives was was based on, right? This is the kind of walk and talk that Ben um, was shooting for on the Jack Wolves and really has achieved, in my opinion. But this, it's next level. I mean, listen. Those corners are perfect. Everything is dialed into perfection. Dead nut centered. There was that little spot on the spine here. It's still there. Uh, I don't know if I really want to touch it, but hey, let's take a look real quick. Slide on over here. This usually can't hurt anything. This is a uh, rusty racer from KPL. Let's just see what happens. There it goes. Gone. Yeah, it was just the tiniest bit of surface rust, and that's it. Whoops. She's now perfectly clean. You guys won't be able to see too well with the lighting I have. Still working that out, but I think for this type of video, the lighting's really good. Uh, but, yeah, that's gone, though, so... I'll send them a bill for my uh, repair work. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but this is fine. Um, so those three are awesome. If you guys are interested in those, you just need to uh, hit them up. But um, let's go take a look at the drop. I've been told it's a lighter one this week, so we'll see what is up. Um, so first things first, we have the Pioneer Jack. So I actually have mine in the pocket right now. I've been carrying this every day since I got it. I now have my Northwoods Leatherwork Slip. I believe Troy made some custom ones for the Pioneer or just in general that Jack Wolf Knives will be dropping very soon. This is uh, ghost leather. So it's green Butero leather with a black wax coating and then yellow stitching. And I have the Toxic Fat Carbon Pioneer Jack with that beautiful belt satin. Hard to see in the lighting again, but... There you go, a little bit. Uh, really comfortable in the hand and walk and talk. Phenomenal. I mean, just really good. I've really enjoyed this model. If you guys are looking for something that can do a little bit of harder use than your usual Jack Wolf, this is the one for you. And it comes in five very, very visible variations <laughs> you have uh this one with the toxic storm or no just is it toxic storm or just toxic i'm not sure uh, i'm gonna call it toxic storm fat carbon um then we have blue dark matter toxic storm called it then we have jig titanium which is dlc so keep that in mind it's not just jig tie they should add dlc to that um but it's all blacked out Smooth titanium, I believe, with a hand satin, and then Ultim with a belt satin. So uh, just keep in mind there are some different nuances there when it comes to the blades. We'll, I'll show you here. So you're looking at a hand satin on this uh, plain titanium. Then you have belt satin on the Ultim, Toxic, and uh, Dark Matter Blue. And then you have DLC on the... Uh, jig titanium so just so you're aware three hundred dollars each on those so if you missed out on a certain version now's your shot to uh to get that one we have this really cool uh worry stone from ben Krein in ultim with a sagaha wave pattern looks really cool yeah 150 bucks 460 bucks for it that's just gonna come down to um how much you want a worry stone i will say it looks absolutely badass and i would have loved to have checked one out so um, that's my thought on that cwf with the peanut i did have these in to check out uh check out my previous what's hot videos you have tumbled and stonewashed and i will not lie to you guys i have been contemplating going up a size on my flashlight so you guys know i have been a CWF micro Arcadian fan for years now, right? It's my favorite flashlight in the world, but 
ever since I moved, I feel like it's a bit darker and I have less, I have more space to cover walking out to the trash can last night. I had this out, I put it on a hundred percent and it still felt very underwhelming. Um, it's enough, right? But I don't know. I might need to step it up to a double A 18650. I think it is size flashlight. So that might be something I get into in the near future. I don't know what my options are. Of course, there's the Okluma, but I just can't stand the forward clicky functionality on those. So I don't know what I'll be doing, but I'm still rocking this for now. I might pop in one of my double uh, A size lights that I have laying around from review. These type are just a little too big for me at this point, I think. Uh, this is a Olight Warrior Mini 3, and these are fantastic for me to have around the house. But in pocket, I just don't know if I can put something that big in my pocket. That's what she said, but um, I don't know. We'll see what happens there. I just wanted to mention that. Uh, we have the skeleton key from a uh, skeleton key from Chavez back in a uh, D2 steel, and this is blacked out for fifty bucks. Hell yeah, go pick that up. Holman Hadfield Armory. I actually had one of these. Big shout out to my good buddies, Grady's Gear, D2M Knives and Gear, and Bearded Gear. Been a minute since I've talked to those guys. I love them, but they're all kind of like out of the game. Jake is still sort of in it with Luft, but. Um, not around as much in the space that I'm in. Uh, and I love those guys. And they gifted me one of these. I never found a spot for it at the old house, just did not have the space. And since moving here, I really tried to find a spot. Like I have that nightstand or table there. I have another thing in the corner, but I just always have like something else I need out. Like I need my shipping scale. I need a spot to tape stuff. Like I just don't have a spot where it's like, let me just display this. And then on top of all that, I have to have four knives that I will keep in there. And what? Not I'm just displaying four knives? I don't want to just put four knives in there and not touch them. That's what I do. I touch knives. Um, and then rotating? I don't know. I just don't think I am the person for this. So I gave it away. <laughs> uh, when my buddies were here, local buddies were here helping us QC the uh, nip, I gave it to my buddy Kent because it seemed like he could use it and um, I wasn't using it and I feel felt like re-gifting it made the most sense. So I do appreciate that I got it as a gift. I just could never find a good use for it personally. So that's where I'm at with that guy. It does come in walnut, which is sold out, which is interesting. I think the black looks better, but oh no, that yeah, that walnut looks nice. But it also comes in black. 195, it looks like across the board on that guy. So very cool. Let me clear this out. Oh, by the way, while we're here, it looks like the pre-order on the barley is closing. So this is closing, I think now, like today or tomorrow. I don't know when it's closing, but if you guys are on the fence on the Devo Knives Barley design that Urban EDC is doing, I would suggest you jump on it now because this price is going to go up uh, when they come in. And um, so, you know, it starts at 250 in the plain titanium. That uh, blue Sagaha really is the one for me. And that one's $2.99. So if you guys are interested, you can support us by buying this. You can support me by using the link. And uh, you get a really, really cool slip joint knife. Um, we love this design. I can't wait for those to come in. So I just wanted to mention that. Um, the Barley is closing on the, the, uh, the pre-order. We have a custom from Tracy LaRock. Uh, we have a Microtech UTX-70. We have a Luther Foundling Pry Bar. I think I checked those out before. Uh, remember, I checked the Zerk one out. That was pretty cool. We have a uh, wallet from L Mercantile Slim Pickens Bifold Wallet. We have a key ring from them. That looks cool, 30 bucks. We have a Hank from Everyday Hanks for 25 And this really cool-looking fixed blade from Ben Krein. Um, I got to say, I mean, it's 500 bucks, but it is gorgeous uh comes with a really nice leather slip uh yeah it's expensive but it looks absolutely fantastic so um i think ben Krein might be tom Krein's son is that what they're saying here uh yep 
Tom Crine is Ben Crine's dad. Cool. Good to know. So check that out. And that's it, guys. That is the drop for the week of September 27th. Did I say 26? Anyway, September 27th, 3 p.m. Eastern time. Link is down below if you want any of that stuff. You can also get early access by signing up for their Yamamoto Club um, or spending a shit ton of money like I did. So there you go. I love you guys. I really hope you guys enjoy these videos. You let me know down in the comments if you enjoy these videos. If you have a certain item you want this week. If you are into one of these customs that I have here. Maybe you're into the nip. Coming soon, baby. The drop is on October 19th at 1 p.m. Eastern on our website or White Mountain Knives or traditionalpocketknives.com. Also... We will be at Blade Show, table 9E, and we'll have nippies there for you to touch. <laughs> All right. I love you guys. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day. I love you. And I will catch you 